This is the July 2019 Python and Alpha database office hours. It's an ask me anything session. Today is going to be relatively brief in terms of what we present to you. And then hopefully you'll uh, hit us up with some questions and uh, we can go through those. Everything in open source land is always subject to change. So don't hold us to any kind of schedules or any future plans we mentioned. So on this call, myself, Christopher Jones, product manager, which means I do some of the sort of legal legwork, some of the doc writing, bits and pieces like that. Anthony Tuaningo, creator and maintainer of CX Oracle driver, and does a huge amount with the Node Oracle DB driver and various other driver efforts. Uh, he's also been working on doc recently, which is also something we uh, will talk about a little bit. And Blaine Carter is the uh, evangelist here in the Python and uh, is going to be doing some work with Node.js as well. So we've got some good skills online. The agenda is pretty brief, basically gives you a voice. And we have that little icebreaker theme. This month is going to be talking about some of the external authentication uh, techniques with Oracle database, particularly through CX Oracle. And then at any stage, you can chat or talk with us. And there's a question come up. Sounds good. Actually, there's confirmation everything's going okay. Thank you for that. Um, so the stuff, so one stuff thing I will talk about is just this user manual. So we've been trying to get a user manual out there for some time for CX Oracle. You will know there is an API guide and there are various uh, cookbook articles out there on oracle.com. Uh, but we're trying to collate things back into a user guide and it's been a little bit of a um, trial for various reasons, basically just because we've, we've been working on code um, so Anthony has been doing a lot of work. I saw he did various commits overnight. I've been doing a little bit of tidying up and uh, certainly had a doc writer who did a lot of the framework early on. So hopefully that will come out sooner rather than later. And uh, that will just go into the normal doc place on read the docs. Uh, obviously open source project. So if you want to contribute to that any stage, just let us know. And then I just have this last slide before I throw over to Anthony, and that is we're going to talk about sort of proxy connections, what it means to do external authentication, and you know, how do we how do we handle all of this in the Oracle land with connection pulling, non connection pulling scenarios. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and throw over to Anthony, who will start sharing. You can see my terminal here. All looks good. Yeah, good. So at the top of this file, I've just got some uh, SQL code that you would use uh, for this example. Uh, there's a user called authTest, uh, identified by the password, also authTest. Uh, obviously, you'd use something a little more useful if you were doing this for real. Uh, all I'm doing is granting create session, because that's all I'm doing here is just um, uh, connecting and demonstrating how to do the connection. I've also created another user called proxy test and the password here is it doesn't matter because it really doesn't matter. It can be any value at all. We're not actually connecting directly, but we also have to grant create connect, uh, grant create session. Sorry. And the other thing that needs to be done here is you need to identify that the proxy test is allowed to connect through the user auth test. So that's done by this alter user statement here. Then I will just go down a little ways first. In here, I've got a function called show user info. That's just showing you um, what the proxy user is and what the session user is according to the database and just displaying that information. And then I've got a whole bunch of different scenarios down here. The first scenario is to simply do a basic connection off test password auth test and the DSN, that's the data source name or TNS entry or easy connect string or whatever connect string you require. Um, that's up here. And then this string here is simply displaying the uh, scenario that I'm on doing. Now, if we want to use external authentication, there are two different approaches for external authentication. Uh, the first one that I'll show you is operating system authentication. So I've created a user called ops dollar Anthony. That ops dollar is the typical uh, prefix that you stick on 
uh, a username in order to identify it as an OS user. That can be changed, of course. And you identify it externally, so you're telling it it's going to be done via the operating system or, as I'll show you later, by a wallet. And you grant create session to this just as usual, and you can also do the alter user proxy test to grant connect through this user as well. If you're going to use um, a DSN like I've done here, then you also need to set the system parameter remote OS authent equals true, and that does have some security implications, so you should only do this um, in certain situations. Better off would be the wallet authentication. And that uh, is done via, well, actually I'll show that after. So here, for external authentication, we do not provide the username and password. We just provide the DSN and it will connect. And if we want to do the basic auth with proxy, here we say we want to connect as auth test and the proxy test is put in square brackets. And then after that, we put the password like so. If we want to connect as an external authentication with proxy, then as you can see, again, we don't put the username slash password. We just put in the square brackets in here. And all these four scenarios are for standalone connections. You can do the same thing with session pools as is shown here. You'll note it looks very, very similar. The only exception here is when you do an external auth, you have to specify that you're doing external authentication and you have to create a heterogeneous pool. Uh, and the same thing goes down here. You have to create a heterogeneous pool, setting homogeneous equals false. This is exactly the same as the third scenario above. Connecting through auth test as proxy test. And that's the only three that are, uh, here's the fourth one, sorry. Here's external auth with proxy. Again, it looks very similar to above. If you tried this down below, as this is commented out, this will not work. You will get an error. So, so let, let, let me just jump back, Anthony. So yep. just to clarify for people, so the default pool is homogeneous, which means all the connections in that pool have the same basically session user. They're, they're connected as the single user. Here in these cases, because we, we, we're allowing people to use the pool, but actually have different connection privileges or, or, or different session users in those sessions. That's why it's not homogeneous, it's heterogeneous. Yes. And also for external authentication, you must have a heterogeneous pool, even if all of the sessions use external authentication. Yep. That's just a limitation. And then this does not, does not work session. Do you want to explain? So what's that doing, which is different to what's above? Because my eyes are well, seeing, seeing lots of brackets. And... Yeah. Uh, and in the one above here, you'll see I'm setting external auth equals true, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not providing a username, password, or anything. And I'm only doing it when I call, when I acquire a connection from the pool. That's when I'm specifying the user. Here, an attempt is being made to specify a username up front when you create the pool. And that's just not supported. And when we say not supported, you and I know this means it's not supported at the lower C level API into the Oracle database. So that's why yep. we can't expose it up to, to CX Oracle. So don't expect yep. magic fixes us to suddenly make this work. Yeah. So if I run this, you will see here at the top, uh, standalone basic auth, there is no proxy user, right? That's none. But the session user auth test, external auth, again, proxy user is none, but now the session user is ops dollar Anthony. And if we do basic auth with proxy, now you can see the proxy user is set to auth test and the session user is proxy test. And likewise, external auth with proxy, you get ops dollar Anthony and proxy test. And then the same things exactly will show down below for pooled. 
this will be easier to see when people can compare the script with the output and we'll certainly make sure that occurs in the yeah. coming documentation. Obviously people yeah. can review the video and have a quick look. Yeah. So to show briefly the uh, wallet, uh, I destroyed the wallet er earlier to this, so I can run this command here. This thing will create the wallet. So if we go, oh, you can see here there's nothing, but as soon as we do this and we have to create a password. Oh, second. Another thing to note about external authentication is that you can use other sources, you know, the old LDAPs and Oracle ID, OID, and things like that. I think just for ease of use, we tend to just create the uh, insecure remote OS authentication. Just yeah. We tend to have a different client and, and server machines. So you can see here, after I ran this command, it created a wallet in my TNS admin uh, directory. And now I'm going to add a credential to it. And now you can see that the size will have increased a bit. And then I need to change in SQLite.ORA. We have to set, identify the wallet location. So here I've told it's my in my share config Oracle. And you also need to set this wallet override equals true. Uh, otherwise, if you don't, then it'll use OS authentication. And now once I do this again, you'll note now that the session user is, if, if for external authentication, is now auth test, because that's what I've done instead of ops dollar Anthony. So that shows you how, how easy it is to, uh, to use wallet authentication, which is uh, much more secure than the remote OS authentication. And we're seeing wallets come in a lot more. Certainly uh, we in Oracle land are using Oracle Cloud a lot. Actually, a lot of customers are too, to be, to be truthful. Um, and things like the autonomous database force you to download a wallet that's pre-created wallet. You don't need to run any of those make store commands. And that wallet you would put in the, in the files as Anthony showed in the uh, tennis admin kind of directory, and you would connect with the uh, external authentication process. Yep. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you, Anthony. That is kind of comprehensive. The samples are good to see. I think that'd be really good to, to get out there. There are a couple of samples already out there if anybody does care in the Node.js land, in the Node Oracle DB documentation, which is effectively equivalent. It's another driver very similar to, to CX Oracle and the fact that it sits on top of Anthony's C layers code. Um, and uh, if you really want to get a head start, look at that or just ask us questions. And this topic came up this month because somebody did ask us a question on GitHub issues list. So with that, as Anthony says, are there any questions? Does anybody have uh, Anything they want to chat about, want to unmute themselves, um, feel free to unmute or chat. And if you don't want to hang around, I'll just put up some resources there for people to, to look at. I know development land, people are often a bit shy, but uh, go for it, just ask us anything. And if you I'm are shy. too shy, then just ask us on the, any of these other forums that I've got up on the screen. I've lost my chat window, so if uh, anybody sees something, yell out. Um, okay, there we go. What's happened there? Have a chat question. We'd like a copy of the script to play with. <laughs> yeah, we could probably do that. I think there is that GitHub issues question came up. It wasn't totally clear which scenario the user was asking about, but we should be able to just throw the, the script out there on that. So uh, check uh, GitHub for recently updated issues later on today. And 
Anthony will probably put his script out there. Yeah, I can I can just put the script on your uh, on the office hours announcement. This video will be up there pretty soon as well. Yeah. You won't be able to escape the script. You'll get it too many ways. Okay, any other questions? Last chance. Well, with that, thank you for attending the Python and Oracle Database Office Hours for July. Look forward to catching up with you next week, next month. And uh, then we're gonna be coming up into the Oracle Open World month. So we might end up skipping September or possibly even changing the, the time zone since I will be traveling and uh, certainly always available whenever you want to contact us. Thank you, everyone.